Generating functions. Hi, I am Furka. Welcome to my submission video for the 3 blue 1 brown summer of mathematical exposition number 2. In this video, I'm going to talk about generating functions. Chapter 1. Introduction. What's a generating function? Suppose you have a sequence in your hands a0, a1, a2, a3, dot dot dot. The best way to represent all of them at the same time would be a n equals to something. We can plug in for n and get a specific element of our sequence. This something would be our generating function. For example, the sequence 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, dot dot dot, which is known as triangular numbers, can be represented as a n equals n times n plus 1 divided by 2. More on this later. We must also consider that there are other complicated sequences such as 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, dot, 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 which are clearly not representable with simple functions. So there might not be a generating function every single time. We might not be able to give a simple formula for every sequence, but sometimes we can give a simple formula for the sum of a power series whose co coefficients are the sequence that we are looking for. For example, the Fibonacci numbers. Their relationship, fn plus 2 equals fn plus 1 plus fn, gives the sequence 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, dot dot dot. Now, there are exact formulas for fn, but n Fibonacci number is the coefficient of x to the n in the expansion of the function x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared as a power series about the origin is also a good answer. More on this later also. Let's start with an easy example. Let's say we have a sequence a0, a1, a2 and so on satisfying the relationship a n plus 1 equals 3 a n plus 1 and our first term is 0. We can calculate first few members of our sequence easily. I can't come up with a general term right away when looking at this sequence though. Now, instead of giving you the general way as known as sum a index i x to the i right away, I will start from the end and go back to the start. Because this sum makes no sense when you first see it. Let's write down a few steps of our recurrence relationship. We can see that left hand side is always a step ahead and right hand side is trying to catch it. If our relationship was a n equals 3 a n plus 1, then we can easily find every single member of our sequence, but it ruins the sequence also. How can we do the same with a n plus 1 equals 3 a n plus 1? To put it in a different way, how can we make a n plus 1 equal to a n, at least on paper, without demolishing our sequence? The answer is, we can drag the n to infinity and right side can finally catch up to the left. If this doesn't make sense to you, imagine you have infinitely many sheets. You want to match and pair them, so you do that exactly like this. But one side just moves one sheep forward. Does this break anything? No, your sheep now look like this. The same concept applies to our sequence as long as there are infinitely many members. This explains why we are summing over all of the sequence. So basically, this sum is there because we need to match and pair our sheep. But why do we need x to the i? We need x to the i as a tag. It maps the sequence for us. Power series way of encoding its information is this. Hopefully the sum makes much more sense now. If we go back to our problem, let's handle the left side first. We need our tag, so we need to multiply with x to the n. So a1 becomes a1 times x to the 0. a2 becomes a2 times x to the 1 a3 becomes a3 times x to the 2, and so on. Let's add all these up so the other side can catch us at infinity. This becomes the left hand side. Now, we can represent this as a sum. Let's handle the right side now. Same steps apply pretty much. First, multiply with x to the n to give a tag to each member. 3a0 plus 1 becomes 3a0 plus 1 multiplied by x to the 0. 3a1 plus 1 becomes 3a1 plus 1 multiplied by x to the 1, and so on. Let's add all these up so we can catch the left side at infinity. So right side becomes this, 
with some manipulation we can get our right side to this. In the end we have this equality. Let's finally define our function f of x as sum from n bigger or equal to 0 a of n x to the n. Now this sum doesn't look like fx but we can make it similar by multiplying with x. We need to multiply both sides to preserve the equality though. The left is so close to our fx now. All we need to do is add the first term of our function and our first term is already zero so it won't change anything. We can simply change m plus 1 to n and the equation will still hold. The left side became fx now. Right side however requires more manipulation. Let's take the tree outside of our sum to see that it's also an fx. We arrived at the trickiest part now. This element doesn't look similar to our fx and we need to deal with it. Let's write this part openly. This infinite sum can be represented as 1 divided by 1 minus x. We can do this because we don't really care what x is. Let's finish our calculations now. All we need to do now is to isolate our function. To get our sequence back we need to represent our function as a power series first. We can use Taylor expansion for that purpose. We can also use partial fraction decomposition to get a better formula for our function. We can re-expand our function using the geometric sum formula. So we get this equality. In this function each coefficient is in the form 3 to the n minus 1 divided by 2. So our general term for the sequence a n plus 1 equals 3 a n plus 1 is a n equals to 3 to the n minus 1 divided by 2. Unfortunately this video has to end right here. Normally I planned a much larger project but after making the video I realized how time taking it was and I can't finish it in time. I know I barely scratched the surface so far and I'm going to finish this series for sure. There are a lot more to talk about. Thanks for watching. I will continue with chapter 2 and dive into more details.